thank you so much for joining us. Just firstly, give us, you've obviously been in contact with the family for a long time. Give us your reaction when you heard the verdict today. Well, obviously the first thing that we have to take into consideration is that a young man has lost his life and the family will be grieving today. Uh, they, as they've rightly said, are, are, are devastated uh, by what has happened and um, we have to respect that. And do you respect the decision of the jury, I guess? Uh, we have to respect legal uh, processes. However, we do also have to respect the fact that the CPS thought that there was enough evidence to bring a murder charge. It is absolutely right that when somebody dies after contact with the police that there is an investigation that is what happened here and it went further obviously there will be many many people who are upset um, about the outcome there was a lot of upset and anger uh, following uh, chris carver's fatal shooting and and we'll see that expressed at the protest today are there questions about the process at the protest. We'll see that. Ex are there questions about the process? Um, I, I expect many people will have questions about the process. As we will know, there have been very, very few officers that have ever faced a charge like this, but there have been many, many more people that have been killed following contact uh, with the police. There are a number of families um, that are still waiting uh, for, for, for what they believe is, is justice. So we do have to acknowledge that that is the case. It's, it's, it's been very, very few officers that have ever faced such a charge. You say you respect the legal processes. I guess what is your message to the family this evening? I mean, wh where can they go from here? Well, we know that there is still an inquest. Um, there are perhaps other legal options open to them, but they absolutely have the right uh, to, to, to question this, as do a number of members of my community uh, that have been doing it. As I said, there was a lot of shock, there was a lot of anger uh, when this fatal shooting uh, took place and there is clearly a lot of work to be done to rebuild trust and confidence in policing, particularly within the black community, where you will know uh, that black men in particular are met with more force. So that there is a lot of work to, to be done and we know there is not as much trust and confidence in the police as there should be. You say there's a lot of work to be done. How, how can that trust be restored? Well, I think firstly by actually working uh, with our communities. At the moment, there is a feeling um, that black communities are over-policed uh, um, as, as, as citizens and under-policed as victims. I think people are concerned about uh, the lack of community policing as opposed to response units. We have seen far too many videos uh, over, over the years of what look um, like brutality and perhaps a number of officers jumping out of a car uh, to stop and search uh, one young man and when people rather do call the police to investigate uh, crimes because of the shortage and we know that the police are under a lot of pressure in terms of resources but you know, people worry about the fact that they do not necessarily see that response when it comes to other crimes. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done, as I said, to rebuild uh, that trust and confidence, particularly um, in my area, um, Brixton Hill, uh, Clapham area. We, there, there has been a history um, of, of, of issues between police and communities, and we want to see that resolved. We work quite well, actually, with our local police officers. And in fact, a lot of the issues are when officers come from outside of the area. On the police, though, this was a case that caused huge uproar within the Met. Absolutely. Um, and people I hear, or officers I hear, are concerned that should they, you know, use said firearms or should they use a certain amount of force that they will find themselves in trouble. But as I said, and, and as is actually a fact, very few officers have faced such a charge, whereas a number of more people have died following contact with the police. And can I ask you a bit about what's happening this evening? So I'm right in thinking you're going to the Old Bailey and you're, you're meeting the family. What is happening there? Uh, well, the campaign and the family have called a protest, uh, which is their right. Uh, they are not happy with the decision and they are going to peacefully assemble and, and express that opinion, as, as many people have often done in this particular situation. And are you going to be part of that protest? Yes, I'm going to go and, and show my support for my community. And 
I want to ask you about a, a slightly different topic, if you if you don't mind, if we have time, um, because you've talked yes. about the need to be open about talking about slave, slavery reparations. We know that the Prime Minister is going to so Samoa to meet other Commonwealth leaders. Um, there was a very clear indication today from Downing Street spokesperson saying we do not give out um, reparations. We won't be offering an apology at Trogham. That's the meeting that's happening in Samoa. What was your reaction to that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that if it is on the agenda for Commonwealth nations, it should very much be on our agenda. It speaks volumes if we are not willing to address what is a concern amongst a group of nations which we, which we literally call a family. Um, it is wrong that for one of the worst crimes in history, uh, which we played an active part in, we are yet to even provide an apology or even discuss the idea of reparations. I mean, an apology is free. Uh, that's something that we could give quite freely. Uh, reparations as well doesn't have to just take the form of financial uh, reparations. There are many other ways in which we could atone for things that the British state has done in the past. So were you quite disappointed then with the response from number 10 today? Um, yes, it is quite disappointing, but I think more important than my disappointment is going to be the disappointment of a number of nations who would hope that by now the UK saw them as equals. I guess the argument on the other side is that this could cost trillions of pounds should you know, an ordinary taxpayer who has no personal responsibility be paying. Well, I think that is part and parcel of the issue. No one sat down to talk to uh, reparations campaigners in the UK or reparations uh, campaigners outside of the country or the governments fully about what reparations means. Yes, people have quantified it in terms of, of money, but there are a number of different ways. There are environmental reparations, educational reparations. There are things that we can do um, that are actually within our law, returning uh, human remains uh, that are stored currently in museums. That is a form of... Of, of, of reparations. It's just that we haven't taken the time to discuss all of the different things uh, that we could do to literally repair the imbalance, repair the damage that was caused by enslavement and colonialism. And, and I think it's wrong if we don't even actually just take the time to discuss it again with a group of nations, which I, I believe that we are family. And obviously, it's, it's also going to have another impact. For those who don't accept the moral argument, I would look at the economic one. At the moment, India and South Africa are choosing to go to the uh, BRICS uh, meeting as opposed to attend, attending um, the, the Commonwealth Heads of Nations. And I think that speaks volumes. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's showing that there are a number of nations who are, are, are you know, climbing uh, economically, not because of what the UK has helped them to do, but in spite of it. And, you know, following leaving um, our largest trading partner, Brexit, we really do need uh, to make friends. And we're not going to do that across the world if we continue to look down on people. Belle, Ribeiro, Addy, thank you so much for joining us this evening.